My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to a West Coast edition of Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I love people make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Look, we don't care about rate cuts. We care that the Fed's no longer the enemy. That's what this stock market's saying. The Fed kept rates steady today and gave a forecast for some rate cuts in the future. But while the Fed is important, the specifics of when we get rate cuts or how many, that's become small potatoes. The important thing is that we can afford to think about earnings again, rather than worrying endlessly about the Fed's next move. A lot of people want to play that part of the game. Not me. I prefer to try to make money in the market. And for that, the earnings are what truly matter. Remember, I am not an economist or a Fed diviner. I am a dollar sign represented by a man. And this dollar sign likes what he sees, knowing that the Fed is our back and will cut when needed. That's why the Dow gained 401 points today. S&P jumped 0.89%. NASDAQ pole vaulted 1.25% today. But the key thing is we've reached the point in the cycle where you don't need to fret about the Fed. We're so used to parsing every word from Fed Chief Jay Powell, every statement, every press conference. I said, forget that. Parse all you want. I'm going to go recommend NVIDIA. Buy some Eli Lilly for the Chapel Trust. Of course, I'm not telling you the Fed's irrelevant. Couldn't be further from the truth. But I fall squarely into the camp of the late Marty Zweig, who dispensed wisdom from his perch on the iconic Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser show. Marty always said, don't fight the Fed and don't fight the tape. That meant if the Fed was raising rates, you needed to be cautious. If the tape, the action in the stock market, was bad, and it's often bad when the Fed's tightening, then you need to be even more cautious. So long as the Fed was raising rates or just threatening to raise rates, it basically controlled the direction of the vast majority of stocks. Sure, some names could defy the Fed, but far fewer than we'd like. And then once the Fed's not raising, well, you know what? Why don't I analogize so you understand? I used to take my youngest daughter to a huge Dave and & Buster's in Philly with Pop when she was little, and she had this game. She wanted me to play. I hated it. It was had a giant claw. You know, you put a quarter in, you got to direct the claw. We spent maybe 30 bucks on that stupid claw. And at most, we caught maybe, uh, I don't know, a five-inch high troll doll worth about 15 cents. Real bad risk reward. When the Fed's tightening, picking winners in the stock market is like playing with that Dave & Buster's claw. But when the Fed's done tightening, it's like the claw suddenly works. You can actually pick things up. Someone might be worth something. Something big. Now there's this whole contingent of money managers and strategists who think we can divine the Fed's next move, and that's all that matters. We can game how many rate cuts we'll get and when they'll do it, and that's what, what, what we're supposed to be doing. For the most part, I think these people are charlatans now. They might as well hang out at Dave & Buster's. They're saying three cuts here, four cuts there. Please, I'm telling you, that's not important anymore. Whether it's three cuts or two cuts or one cut or even no cut, we are no longer fighting the Fed, and that is what matters. If you're not fighting the Fed, you can use that claw machine without feeling like you're constantly going to get ripped off. Of course, if the Fed stops being friendly, if j Powell says, whoops, we stopped tightening too soon, and now we need another rate hike, oh, then we are indeed back to where we started, shoving that 30 bucks in the claw machine, getting endless heartbreak. But the Fed didn't do that, which brings me to why I'm out here in Silicon Valley, where the money's made if there's money to be made. The process of making money in the market is something I want to exploit. I know everybody's sick of hearing about NVIDIA, unless you already bought on my recommendation and now have truly staggering gains. Some investing club members have made millions in this one. Others have happily retired from it. But I can tell you that NVIDIA's supercomputers are about to impact nearly every aspect of our lives, yours and mine, because they've reached the tipping point where artificial intelligence can be used to improve everything. Just today, you know what I did? I dropped into the Omniverse, just like that. The one I told you to look at, Jensen Wong's keynote. In that speech, Jensen joked about how he gets a kick out of stepping out of a non-existent car that he sees when the Omniverse is streamed into the Apple Vision Pro. So I put the Vision Pro on, and I gaped at a Nissan, Nissan sports car. Really cool. I am telling you, it was there. I know. I fiddled with some color combinations. I checked under the hood. I looked in the trunk, kicked the tires, and, of course, sat in that nice bucket seat. Smooth. I loved it. I wanted to buy it. And I said to myself, if I were a visionary car dealer, maybe a Carvana, 
I'd send a Vision Pro to anyone who's thinking about buying a car, then let them do the same thing I did. The customer would buy his car from the Vision Pro and voila, delivered to the door. Then I visited a factory floor in the Omniverse where I could make changes just looking at the assembly line. Resolution was so perfect that if I were Siemens or any other large factory builder, I'd give every engineer one of these things. Same for, goes for anyone who's building ships or jet planes. Anything where something needs to be made with changes that could be expensive. Boeing desperately needs this technology. I'd make sure that all of my engineers and architects and even welders, HVAC people, had the Omniverse streamed in by the Vision Pro or something similar. They are hand in glove, I'm telling you. But does Apple know that? Can you afford to wait until they do? Right now, they're treating the Vision Pro as a consumer product when the truly transformative applications and the huge money are all about the enterprise via the Omniverse. Luckily, they have the foresight to charge $3,500. They could charge double to a Siemens or a GE or a Hyundai Heavy Industries or a Floor or a Bechtel, just to name some of the builders of gigantic projects. Remember, it only works because NVIDIA supercomputers are connected to the Omniverse, which is then fed into the Vision Pro. If I were you, I'd want to own some Apple before they go after the corporations, not just the individuals with this tremendous device. It will be worth it. Look, I don't want to get too totally hung up on tech. The orders were strong today because I got a break from the Department of Energy, which said they won't face billions of dollars in fines if they keep making a lot of gas guzzlers. Good for Ford, good for GM. Bad for the polar bears. You buy the retailers now when the economy is still strong enough and the numbers for a Dix or a Best Buy or a Costco are strong enough. The travel stocks, they do well when people are flush, which they still are. But the bottom line is simple. When you aren't fighting the Fed, the claw picks up a lot of toys that are worth something. We aren't fighting the Fed. Get to the claw and try to grab some winners. Let's take calls. Let's start with Perros in California. Perros. Hey, Jim. Uh, thanks for visiting the Bay Area. It was um, nice to have you over here. Really appreciate it. I'm not going doing. anywhere. I'm staying out here. I don't really like New <laughs> okay. Jersey anymore. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, no thank problem. you for allowing us to look at the market markets bottom up instead of top down yes. that's something i've learned from you and i really appreciate that it just takes a lot of time and you can't have any sleep but that's all right you can sleep yeah. on saturday how can i help <laughs> exactly so um just wanted to ask you about uh this company they're in the energy space they um they're pretty big they own the 76 franchise gas stations and uh they're doing pretty well just wanted to get your take on psx philip 66 it's a horse, man. It's a horse. It's a terrific, terrific company. And I got to tell you, I'll give you two. I think Valero's great, too. Uh, yeah, the refiners have it going. All right, listen, people, we aren't fighting the Fed. That's what you need to know. So get to the claw and try to grab some winners. Man, buddy, tonight, I'm bringing you part two of my conversation with our gracious host for these past couple of days, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Ma. Don't miss our far-reaching interview on everything from his journey to the U.S. at age nine to sovereign AI. Then the U.S. government just awarded its largest CHIPS Act funding yet. I'm getting all the info with the Secretary of Commerce. But first, I'm continuing my tour de force of companies in San Francisco with exclusive interviews from SoFi and Amazon Web Services. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.